Today I'm gonna show you how to find the notes on the fretboard easily with the help of the bicep square. I call it the bicep square because it's a square formed by the notes B, C, E and F. This square can be found in different places on the fretboard, for example B, C, E, F. And it doesn't matter if you're a beginner or advanced player, with a bicep square we are going to light up the dark parts of the fretboard. B, C, E, F. Hello, I'm Eddie Andreas from the Bass Video Academy. The majority of bass teachers explain the notes on the fretboard starting always from the open strings. For example, if we wanted to know what note is the 8th fret on the A string, they would start counting from the open A string, then uh, one note higher we get to B, a half step higher to C, a whole step to D, another whole step E, and finally a half step F. So the 8th fret on the A string is an F. This is all true and correct, but it takes way too much time. If I was about uh, to come up with a bass line or if I wanted to improvise a solo, uh, I can't take a minute and start counting frets and notes. Uh, so there must be a way to memorize the notes quicker than that. When I studied in Los Angeles, I had to study pieces like the cello suites from the German classical composer Bach and I would have to read up until the 12th fret or even higher. And like many bass players I had this uh, kind of like gray zone between the 5th and the 12th fret where you kind of know where the notes are but it takes you one or two seconds to remember it. Also, when I had to play walking bass lines in the ensemble workshops and I wanted to uh, come out of the first position and climb up the neck, I would find that this gray zone was limiting me. So that's why I, why I came up with a bicep square where I would group four notes together in one visual square on the fretboard. Now, I'm also author of a couple of method books on Alfred Music Publishing and my editor once told me that my bicep square was actually a rectangle because of uh, the frets which are uh, longer. And um, well, for me it looks like a square on the fretboard. If we were talking rectangles, I would play something like D, E, G, A. Now that has a rectangle shape for me. Probably you already know the notes in first position. I like to think of it as the bicep square because if we can find the notes B, C, E, F quickly, we already know half of the notes. Yeah, you heard right. Half, more than half of the notes because there are the seven basic notes A, B, C, D, E, F, G and we already know uh, four of them or we can spot easily, quickly, four of them, we know more than half of them. Now we need to light up the gray area on the fretboard uh, with the help of the bicep square and we find another bicep square starting on the seventh fret of the E string, B, C, E, F. Actually those are the exact same pitches as in the first bicep square in the second fret on the A string. Um, just this time we are in another, in a different position on the fretboard. And then if we step one octave up, we find another bicep square starting on the ninth fret of the D string, B, C, E, F. Now that's simply uh, one octave higher than the bicep square before. But now you already get the point that with the help of the bicep squares, um, we can easily navigate around the fretboard without getting lost. Now, if you play a five string bass, we find another bicep square starting on the open B string. We have B, C, E, F. 
And if you play a six string bass, you have another B7 square starting on the fourth fret of the G string. So we have B, C, E, F. Okay, so how can we spot the other three notes that are missing until now? For one part, we could always use the B7 square as a starting point and we find that from the B in the B7 square, we can uh, go one whole tone down and we find A. Or from C in the B7 square, we can go one whole tone up and we find D. And from F in the B7 square, we can go also one whole tone up and we find G. But actually, I like to think of these three missing notes as the open strings. We have the open strings A, D and G. We also have the open string E, but that's not as important since we already um, have the E in the B7 square. And then I like to think of the notes in the fifth fret as the same notes that we find as open strings. So in the fifth fret of the E string, we, we find an A. On the next string, fifth fret, we find a D. On the next string, we find G. And finally, on the fifth fret, we find a C, which is also an open string on a six string bass. Almost the same notes repeat again in the seventh fret. We have the note D in the seventh fret of the G string. Then we have A, E, and finally we have also B in the seventh fret. And while well, this B represents, for example, the open string of a five string bass. So by now we have gained a pretty good orientation on the bass fretboard. I know that this explanation has been fairly quick, so I have created a free video course. Yes, a totally free video course, no strings attached, with special trainings for you uh, to get hold on the BCF squares all over the fretboard and combining them with the notes of the open strings. And this free video course is designed for three weeks. It contains three chapters and each chapter contains three trainings. And each training is explained in the video and you can also download it as a PDF. Uh, and you will also find backing tracks to play along to these trainings. Playing along with the backing tracks makes for a more musical situation and is more fun. So get started today with this free video course. If you have any questions regarding how to find the notes on the fretboard or any other questions, don't hesitate to write me. I'll answer you as soon as possible and I hope to see you in the video course.